Here we're going to be looking at admission of a new partner into a partnership and our example is going to be for where a new partner deals directly with an existing partner or partners rather than with the partnership entity. So this new partner is going to deal directly with the existing partners here and our example is going to be for a contribution of assets to the existing partners here. So the new partner will purchase all or part of the capital interest of one or more of the existing partners in exchange for some consideration or asset here. So we have our existing partnership here with partner A and partner B. Partner A has a capital balance here of 60,000 and partner B has a capital balance here of 90,000. So they have a total capital balance here of $150,000. So new partner C here is going to purchase 50% here of both partner A and partner B's capital for $100,000. So partner C is going to pay $100,000 for this uh, capital from partners A and B here. So uh, par uh, partner A, they're going to sell 50% of their capital here or 50% of $60,000 here to partner C for and the partner C will receive $30,000 worth of capital here from partner A and partner B is going to sell 50% of their capital here of $90,000 to partner C here. So partner C is going to receive $45,000 here in capital. And uh, this is where looking at it here in those these terms here, new partner C is going to pay $100,000 for a $75,000 capital interest here directly from partner A and partner B here. So let's go and look at, uh, we have two methods here that we can use for recording this uh, this uh, partnership sale here. So method one is what we're going to look at first here. And that's based on if what the new partner paid to the existing partners is not used to impute or calculate the fair value of the partnership here. So that would be method one. And when I, when I mean imputed or calculate the fair value, that's what we're going to be looking at in method two here, just so you understand that. The imputed fair value here, that's where partner C invests $100,000 for a 50% interest, and then based on that, the 100000 divided by 50% equals $200,000 for the value of the partnership. So that's for our method two that we're going to look at, but here we're going to look at method one here. So let's go and look at how we'd record this here. Again, um, capital or the partner, partner A here, their capital balance would be re reduced here by 50% of the 60000 or it would be debited here for $30,000. And partner B, their capital amount would be reduced by 50% again here of the 90000 or debited here for $45,000. And capital C would have their capital account credited or, or increased here for $75,000 here. So just a note here, this $100,000 amount that was paid here by the new partner C is not used as a basis for entry because it represents considera consideration paid to the individual partners personally rather than to the partnership entity here. So go back looking at our capital accounts here. The partnership records the redistribution of the capital interest by transferring all or a portion of the seller's capital to the new partner's capital account but does not record the transfer of any assets here. So as we've shown here in our uh, recording of this uh, capital purchase here, uh, capital uh, partner A would be debited here decreased for 30,000 capital or partner B here would be reduced by $45,000 and then capital for partner C would be increased here by $75,000 so we don't see any transfer of assets all it was is a reduction here of their capital accounts and in, for the partner A and B and an increase here in the capital account for partner C here. Now let's look at method two where we use the imputed fair value here of the partnership. So partner C invests $100,000 for 50% interest. So $100,000 divided by 50% equals $200,000, the uh, imputed fair value of the partnership. So we t look at the imputed fair value less the book value of the partnership. So the imputed fair value was $200,000 less $150,000 book value. That's uh, partner A and partner B's capital amount here gives us an increase here of $50,000. Now that represents either undervalued existing assets and or goodwill that's traceable to the existing partners here. 
So normally method two is not used because one, the transaction is not between the partnership, it's an individual transaction, and two, the amount paid may not equal the partnership's current value here. But method two does provide useful information for allocating an acquisition price between the selling partners here. So there's two re recordings that we'd have to make under this method two here. First, we have to record the previously unrecognized increase in the value of the partnership. That was the this $50,000 increase here based on the imputed fair value over the book value. So let's go back and look at how we record that. So we'd increase our assets and or goodwill here for $50,000 and then the capital accounts for partner A and partner B would be each increased here by $25,000 or they'd split this $50,000 evenly here because that's based on the 50% 50, 50 uh, profit or capital ra uh, profit ratio between partners A and partners B here. And then the second thing we'd have to do is we'd have to record the transfer of the original partner's adjusted capital to the new partner C here. So for partner A here we take the capital uh, amount here of 50% times their $60,000 capital interest plus this $25,000 increase in uh, capital that they were allocated for the for this goodwill over here this assets of 50,000 was split 25,000 between each of the partners here. So we would take in total of 60,000 plus the $25,000 increase here times 50% and that would give us $42,500 that kept our partner A's capital account here would be decreased by or debited by. And then for partner B we'd use the same arithmetic here where they're transferring 50% over to uh, partner C here. So we take their capital amount here of $90,000 plus that $25,000 increase that was allocated to them and 50% of that quantity here would give them uh, $57,500 that would reduce uh, partner B's capital account by. That would be what would be transferred to uh, partner C here, $50,500. And then for partner C here, their capital account here would be increased by $100,000, the amount that they had paid here for that to buy into the partnership by buying directly to uh, from um, partner A and partner B here 50% of their capital interest. Now one thing we have to look at here is the selling partner's original capital plus their share of any imputed value may indicate that the current values for which the new partnership is paying. So for example, the purchase price here of $100,000 may be allocated to partners A and B as follows here. So the original capital amount here for partner A was 60000 partner B here was 90000 total amount here was $150,000. So the sale of the unrec uh, for the unrecognized increase here based on that imputed value here was split 25000 for A and 25000 for B. So total amount here of $50,000. So the imputed uh, value here would be uh, the totals here of those of the original capital plus the sale of, un, of the rec unrecognized increase here. Uh, partner A would be, have 85000 here and partner B their total amount here would be $115,000 here. So that would equal the total imputed value here of $200,000. They're summing their amounts across here. So then the pound, uh, percent acquired by the new partner was 50% from A and 50% from B here. So doing our multiplication, the total purchase price here from partner A was $42,500 and partner B here was $57,500. A total amount here of $100,000 that was purchased here from uh, by, by partner uh, C. Okay, in summary, we went through this calculation here to determine what partner C should be paying partner A for 50% of partner A's capital and partner B for 50% of B's capital. So they should be paying partner A $42,500 and partner B $57,500. And that's based on the $100,000 uh, investment that partner C is making here. So this is just to calculate what they might be paying here, partner A and partner B in this case.